Welcome everybody to Digital Earth Academy. This is a program from the Denver Museum of Nature and Science. And my name is Bob and I'm a geologist. I study rocks. And we're gonna take the opportunity to look at the earth from above. And we're gonna be looking at extreme environments and extreme places. And what do we mean by extreme? We mean the places that are the highest, the hottest, the coldest, the deepest, things like that. Let's go see what we can find. We're gonna start in Colorado and we're gonna look at the Rocky Mountains just to the west of Denver. These mountains are extremely high. Some of you may have climbed on some of these peaks. We're gonna look for the highest mountain in Colorado. Have some of you been there? Its name is Mount Elbert and it's over 14,000 feet high. It looks pretty high, but we can find an even higher place. We're gonna to go to an extremely high mountain located on the border between Nepal and China in the area north of India. Let's go see what we can find in the Himalaya mountains. We're looking for the tallest mountain in the world. Some of you know its name, Mount Everest. It's looming right in front of us. You can see it's extremely steep. It's covered in ice jagged cliffs, and it's over six miles high. The air is so thin, climbers carry oxygen bottles with them to help their breathing. It's an extremely difficult place to be and a very dangerous place as well. So we've looked at the highest place on Earth. Now let's go and look at one of the lowest places on Earth that you can walk around on. We're going to go to the Dead Sea an extremely low place, well below sea level, where it's very hot. And here you can see as we come in from the south, it's salty. You can see a salty lake system. And you can also see bathtub rings where the level of the lake in the Dead Sea has been going down. Now, where do you think the deepest place in the world is? It's gonna be the bottom of the ocean. We're gonna go just a little bit over to the west and we're gonna look at the ocean. And you can imagine that the deepest places in the world are at the bottom of the oceans. Sometimes you can get over six miles deep. Let's go and talk to our museum educators, Mitch and Asa, and they're gonna tell us what it's like to go to these places. These are the Marshmallow Marauders, dastardly marshmallow criminals that travel the entire planet to steal all of its best natural treasures. First up, Martina Marshmallow. Here I am, working my way up to the tippy top of Mount Everest, where I'll steal the most precious ice crystals ever. Yes, sir. Whoa. But what Martina Marshmallow didn't think about was what would happen to her marshmallow body at that altitude. Now we aren't actually gonna take Martina to the top of Mount Everest, but we can simulate the air pressure with this vacuum chamber. You see right now we're in Denver, Colorado, about one mile above sea level. The air pressure here is about 12 pounds per square inch, but if Martina were to go to the top of Mount Elbert, over 14,000 feet, the air pressure would be about 8.5 pounds per square inch. And if she were to go all the way to the top of Mount Everest, it would be less than five pounds per square inch. Hey, it's the muscles without the gym membership. Now, if we let the air back in the chamber, all the air bubbles that were inside of Martina have escaped. So she shrivels up like a tiny marshmallow raisin. Well, at least I have my pearls. Our next marshmallow criminal is Maybell Marshmallow. At last, ready to begin my plundering at the deepest levels of the ocean to find the most exotic, interesting creatures. Whoa! But Maybell didn't think about pressure either. The farther you go towards the center of the earth, the more air is pressing down on you. And if you go underwater, it gets even worse. Just compare how easy it is to lift a glass full of air compared to one full of water. As Maybell descends into the ocean, all the water on top of her is pushing down on her. At 50 feet deep, the pressure would be about 22 pounds. That's about as heavy as this stack of books. Uh, it's no worse than public speaking. At 450 feet deep, that's about 200 pounds per square inch. That's like me standing on these books. Bring it on. Nothing will stop me from getting to those sea creatures. Nothing at all. I, oh, there's a spot on the ceiling. 
And if Maybell were to go all the way down to the bottom of the Mariana Trench, that would be 16,000 pounds per square inch. That's four elephants standing on top of each other. Now I don't have four elephants. Huzzah! So I'll have to find some other way to simulate that. Oh, dreads. This isn't terribly precise, but at the bottom of the Mariana Trench, Maybell would experience something like this. Whatever. I never wanted those sea creatures anyway. Okay, now we're going to go to the coldest place and the hottest place on the surface of the Earth. We're going to go first, we're going to go to the extremely hot place, which is Death Valley. Death Valley is in California. It's in the it's the lowest place in the United States. And it's by far the hottest place in the United States. You can see we're coming in from the south. It's an area that's got salt pans. This is a place, the name is called Bad Water. The temperatures can get up to 120 to 130 degrees Fahrenheit. Extremely hot. But now let's shift gears and go to a place that's extremely cold. We're going to go down to the South Pole and we're going to look at Antarctica. Here you can see we're coming into the ice covered continent that it sits at the southern part of the earth and in the winter time it's dark all day long and in the middle of winter it can be down to minus 129 degrees fahrenheit extremely cold let's go back to mitch and asa and see what it would be like to go to these places now the story of millie marshmallow I'm going down to Death Valley and steal all the Chuck Walla lizards. Those lizards are gonna be mine. Whoa! What do you think will happen to Millie in Death Valley? You probably have a pretty good guess for this one. Temperatures in Death Valley get up to 120 degrees Fahrenheit in the summer. You know, that's about the same as the low setting on this toaster oven right here. Throw me in there, Mr. Science. Okay. This is nice. I'm actually gonna lie down. I feel like I'm getting a nice tan. Wow, I'm so relaxed right now. Why don't you just bring me the Chuck Walla lizards, Mr. Science? Hey now. Hey, let go. Stop it. Stop it. Put me back. Put me back in the toast. Next up, the story of Mason Marshmallow. Out of my way. I'm going to Antarctica to steal some penguins. Yeah, I'm gonna get those penguins. <laughs> All right. Whoa. It's not very smart to go to the coldest place on earth without a coat, no matter how cute your little hat is. Maybe for you, wimp, but I'm super tough. So tough I love to get hit in the belly with a hammer. Really, it's true. Go ahead, give me your best shot. Oh, did, you, did you even do it yet? I didn't even feel it because I'm so tough. For this experiment, we're going to use dry ice, most famous for making cool spooky effects at your Halloween party. Now it's not quite as cold as Antarctica, but at negative 109 degrees Fahrenheit, it's pretty cold. Not cold for me, bring it on. I don't even feel it. Oh yeah, more dry ice, please. I'm gonna get those penguins. I feel great, not even cold, I feel so good. I want you to hit me in the belly with a hammer. Come on, do it, come on, wimp. Come on, give me a best shot. Oh yeah, oh, you gonna poke my belly, huh? Well, come on. Bring the hammer on. Oh, I regret nothing. Let's go visit another extreme environment. We're going to go to a place relatively near Colorado that you guys might be able to visit someday. We're going to go to Yellowstone National Park, located in Wyoming. As we look down at Yellowstone National Park from above, you can see some whitish areas that have been bleached. Yellowstone has many geysers, hot springs, and boiling mud pots. It's an extreme environment. Some of the pools are very beautiful. Life in those pools is living in extreme conditions. Some of the pools are acidic. Let's go visit with Mitch and Asa and see what happens if we fall into one of those acidic pools. Now for the story of Mortimer Marshmallow. Off to get those treasures underneath the acid pools. Yes, no one can stop me now. I'm unstoppable. No one at all. Whoop. To explore what might happen with Mortimer Marshmallow, there's actually a fun experiment that you can do at home. All you need is a glass, an egg, and some vinegar. Now, vinegar is acidic, but it's not dangerously so, so you can safely do this experiment in your kitchen. Let's also get Mortimer in there. 
I haven't taken a bath for years. A little acid will probably help me out, I think. Yes, sir. Oh, oh, hey, I smell like pickles. You can also do another one with some food coloring just to see what happens. The reaction is already starting. Those bubbles are the shell starting to dissolve. It's been 24 hours. Let's check on our results. First, let's check on Mortimer. Blech. I feel like dissolved squishy marshmallow slime. If I ever go swimming, it won't be in an acid pool, I'll tell you that much. Or at least I'll wear floaties. <laughs> now let's check on the egg. It still has a little bit of the shell on it, but we can just rub it off with our fingers. Now we're left with just the membrane, a bouncy, rubbery egg. I made a few more eggs in different food colorings. The food coloring actually seeps through the membrane and colors the egg. That dark spot is the yolk. Now these eggs are rubbery and bouncy, but how bouncy? Couple inches, no problem. About a foot, no problem. Foot and a half, splat. And now you can see all that's left of the membrane. It's just a thin, almost translucent layer. That was a really fun experiment. But vinegar doesn't even come close to the acidity of the most acidic environments on Earth. If we want to explore those, we're going to need to be in some sort of laboratory setting with all sorts of safety gear. And we'll need some really powerful acid, like that hydrochloric acid I have right over there. And we need something to try to dissolve. Now, if we're talking about the effects on the human body, we should probably use the hardest part of the human body. Do you know what that is? It's your teeth. But I'm using these teeth right now. Man, where can I get some extra teeth that I could use for a science experiment? The tooth fairy could help. Oh, tooth fairy, awesome. Do you have some teeth I can borrow? Do I have teeth? I have oodles of teeth, bags of teeth, old oh, treasure chests of teeth. But you might not need that many teeth. These are from our friend Rohana. She lost them as a baby, but grew new ones, so she doesn't need these anymore. Wow, thanks, Tooth Fairy. Any time. If you have any... Wait, did you hear that? Somebody just lost a tooth and put it underneath the pillow. I must be off. Goodbye! Okay, thanks, Tooth Fairy. All right, now we've got some teeth. We've got some hydrochloric acid. Now we can do an experiment to see if your teeth would dissolve in acidic pools at Yellowstone. Now this is going to take some preparation, so you're going to have to come back and join us for the regular Digital Earth Academy for this experiment. All right, well, thank you, Mitch and Asa. We have hope you've enjoyed this introductory video, and we invite you to join us for the full Digital Earth Academy coming up, and we'll find out what happens with the Tooth Fairy. See you soon. Mm -hmm.